uh, enterprise uh, workflow with App Script session. Um, so my name is uh, Nicholas Garnier, and I'm going to talk today about App Script, and uh, we'll see how you can use App Script um, to automate uh, your workflow and get things done really quickly and efficiently. <laughs> so first, let me just quickly present myself. Um, so I already said I'm Nicholas Garnier. I'm a developer advocate at Google. Uh, so I joined basically a little bit more than three years ago in 2008, and uh, now I live in Zurich, uh, Switzerland, and I focus mainly on uh, Google Apps APIs. Uh, before Google, I used to work uh, in Toulouse mostly, uh, at Airbus and the French Press Agency, so it's really not far from here. Uh, maybe some of you have visited Toulouse. Who's, who's gone to Toulouse? The pink city, right? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> uh, my Twitter is at Nivco. Uh, nowadays, I'm a bit more active on Google+. Plus. Uh, Plus.nicolasgarnier.com, that's how you can reach my profile. I appreciate feedback, so if you want to like uh, leave notes or you know, uh, give feedback on the presentation or just make fun of me, uh, feel free. Uh, I'll respond maybe. <laughs> All right, and now let's get uh, to know each other a little bit better. Uh, who of you have ever heard of AppScript before? Can you raise your hand? OK, cool. Not, actually, not that many people. So, uh, And who has uh, already used Google Docs? OK, everybody. Good, so you're in the right place. Uh, this is for you. Um, so basically, what is AppScript? So AppScript is a JavaScript uh, runtime in the cloud. So. Um, it's JavaScript code that we're going to run on Google servers, and that's going to integrate very tightly with Google services, giving you really, really quick access to Google APIs and Google services. Um, and during this uh, presentation, we'll see uh, actual code of how you can get things done really quickly and efficiently. Uh, you'll see AppScript is very, very easy to use. So basically, since it's JavaScript, it comes with a JavaScript syntax and base classes. Uh, and as I said, it has built-in access to various Google APIs that are very easy to use. Uh, but you also have uh, the ability to access third-party services. Uh, and it comes with an online editor. You can basically write code in the browser. Um, so you can just simply open the app script editor, write your code there. Uh, we'll see how the online editor works. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty nice, pretty simple. Um, basically, the, the main goal here is for you uh, is you know, make it easy for you to code with AppScript and uh, automate your workflow. So why did we build AppScript? Uh, so basically, we've seen that people using Google Docs and Google Apps in general, so certain Google App services, uh, could get very, very frustrated. Like, if you had to basically, um, for example, do very repetitive tasks, uh, or if you had missing features. So for example, if you had to send 500 emails to, to, to people in your, uh, in your address book, uh, all customized, that's very repetitive, that takes a very long time to do, um, and we'll see how you can basically use App Script to, to help you do that very, very efficiently. Um, so where is App Script? Basically, App Script lives in very different places. So the main way to, um, the main place where App Script lives is actually Google Spreadsheet. So um, who have heard of uh, Excel, Microsoft Excel before? Okay, yeah. Uh, and who have heard of VBA? Yeah, Visual Basic Application. That must be some people, right? In the, in the, in the old times, <laughs> that used to be quite popular. So uh, how App Script started was basically some kind of VBA. So ways to automate your spreadsheet, uh, to build macros, to, to add missing functionalities inside spreadsheet. And now it's grown a bit more to um, offers more, uh, more features, basically. Since you can access many, many Google's APIs, it can run into Google Sites. It can run in standalone mode. You can build a UI and have a standalone application. Uh, and it can run asynchronously. And we'll see in a moment how you can do that. Uh, and who can use AppScript? So it's as simple as uh, babies can use it, and uh, even Spanish babies. Yeah. It was a bad joke, but it worked. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so and <laughs> yeah, there's more bad jokes to come, so I appreciate laughs. <laughs> um, and so AppScript comes with a bunch of Google services, so you can actually uh, access Spreadsheet, uh, access the Google Finance API very easily, send emails, read your Gmail inbox, uh, access and modify Google Sites, Google Docs, etc. 
There's also ways to, um, to fetch external services and use external APIs. Uh, so you can, of course, query external URLs, but there is also an OAuth integration, so you can access OAuth protected resources and OAuth APIs. Uh, you can also use uh, JDBC, access J open JDBC database. Uh, there's a SOAP interface and, you know, XML parsers, of course, and JSON parsers. And also there is ways for you to build the user interface. Uh, why did we build that is, I mentioned that apps, AppScript is actually JavaScript syntax, but it doesn't run on the client. It doesn't run in the browser. It's actually interpreted server-side on our servers, so you don't have access to the DOM structure of the page. So you cannot like access the spreadsheet and within it leaves. Um, so so we, we, we offer a service for you uh, that actually you can use to build interface uh, to interact with your users. Oh, and uh, as I as didn't mention, but there's also a WYSIWYG editor. You can see on the right here, it's a really simple editor. You know, you can drag and drop the pieces and build your own UIs very quickly instead of using the programmatic uh, JavaScript way. Uh, and there is uh, Google Charts API integration, so you can build charts really quickly. And uh, there's the most to come of all this, so hopefully uh, you'll get a better understanding. So now the first demo is very basic. It's just a simple spreadsheet formula, so, uh, well, who can tell me what this does? It's written, but uh, <laughs> it converts inches and centimeters. And what's special about it? No one? Well, that's normal because there's nothing special. It's just JavaScript. Uh, so this is a JavaScript method, uh, I mean function. It, could, it would be the same JavaScript function that we would run in a browser. It's simple JavaScript syntax. Uh, this is AppScript, so let me show you how that works. Uh, I've taken the same exact code and copy pasted it in the, in the AppScript editor. Um, what you can see, I'm sorry for the ones in the back, it might be a bit small. I'm gonna try to zoom, but uh, with the mic it's, it's gonna be hard. Uh, sometimes, up, oh. up. Oh. So, um, so this is Google Spreadsheet. Every who have used Google Spreadsheet before? At least opened it. Okay, good. So you're familiar with this. So um, how how you can access AppScript is actually through the tools uh, menu here and the script editor. If you click this, that's going to open the AppScript editor here, and this is where you can start coding your AppScript functions. So. The most basic example here is simple, simply to, to you know, create a method here, takes one parameter, uh, a number, and returns that number multiplied by 2.54, so uh, it basically converts inches and centimeters. And how you can use that in your spreadsheet afterwards is, so here I have a, a value, 10, and this is the value in centimeter. So you simply write a spreadsheet formula equal with the name of your method, uh, and you pass it a value, so you could pass it 10, or you could uh, simply pass it the, um, the cell which has the value. So here you go, you've, you've added a functionality to a spreadsheet, you've added your custom method, uh, and that was pretty easy. Oh, who wants to try with another number? 20? Up. So if I take this, cookie paste it here, up. So that took the 20 in, in parameters, so that was really easy to use. Um, now let's see how you can actually call third-party services. That was the basic examples. Now we're going to see a bit, a bit more of how to use the AppScript APIs, and after that we'll see how you, like real life use case, where you could use AppScript to, you know, create a real solution for your enterprise. So first, who knows who Kevin Bacon is? Kevin Bacon, anyone? Yeah? Okay, good. Some, some countries I go, there's nobody knows Kevin Bacon. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> So for the one who doesn't know, he's, uh, he played the bad guys in the last X-Men. The last X-Men, was it, uh, it came out, right, already um, in Europe. So, or he played, I think, in Apollo 13, an astronaut. Oh, he played in Wild Things. Great movie, right? Uh, Wild Things. Um, or he played the Invisible Man in the Hollow Man, but that probably doesn't help you. Uh, so what some people built is called the Oracle of Bacon. Who knows the Oracle of Bacon already? Yes. <laughs> Congrats to you. So what is the Oracle of Bacon? It's basically uh, some people, they built some kind of database of actors and they provided a, a service, a website actually, first, where you could give the name of two actors and it would find the link between two actors. So it's a bit, uh, it's a bit just for the fun, uh, the fun of it basically. So if you write the name of two actors, Kevin Bacon 
And if I type the name of another actor, let's say Kevin Spacey, and uh, if internet works, <laughs> yes. So it finds a link between Kevin Bacon and Kevin Spacey. So Kevin Bacon plays in The Man Who Steers Goat with Glenn Morshuer, who plays in the actual uh, X Men First Class, the movie I was talking about, with Kevin Bacon. So there's two movies to link the two actors. So Kevin Spacey has a Bacon number of two. So who can tell me who has a Bacon number of zero? Yes, and he's the only one. <laughs> All right, so what's a bit more interesting and what we're going to use in this example is um, they've actually built uh, some kind of small API. So it's an XML API where you just simply, um, you simply pass in the parameters, name of actors, Kevin Bacon, Kevin Spacey, and here it's just a parameter, the U to, to include mo uh, shows or only movies, that kind of things. And you see, you can see a response in XML. Uh, it's the actual links between the two actors. So we're gonna actually use that in, in a spreadsheet using AppScript. And here you go. I've already used it here. So what I do is simply have the name of two actors. And here I, ha I use a method called KB for Kevin Bacon, passing the name of the two actors. What, what the AppScript does here, it's gonna fetch, uh, I mean, it's gonna use the API, you know, parse the XML and return the sentence. So let's just see how this is done very quickly. So in my app script editor, uh, I simply have a function KB, then I build, um, I build the actual uh, URL here, and I use the URL fetch app. So the URL fetch app is the URL fetch API that allows to query external resources. Uh, for the ones in the back, I'm, I'm gonna zoom again, up, if I manage to. So you can see URL fetch app, and this is the actual URL of the API, and We've built the URL parameters here. And then we parse, uh, I mean, we pass the response to the parse function, who uses the, uh, you know, XML built-in uh, uh, built library to, to simply parse the XML. And then, like, build the sentence we've seen and return it. So that's, that's pretty simple. Uh, now let's go back. So let's try with another actor. You know some Spanish actors? Yeah, in the front, so you can hear. Okay, give me the name of one Spanish actor. People? Antonio Banderas. Okay, he's Spanish? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to mix Spanish and Mexican again and get booed. <laughs> okay, Antonio Banderas, another one? A Spanish one? Is there? You have more than one actor? <laughs> Who? Boo? Oh, Penelope, no, no, so I think they've mostly built na with name of actors and not actresses. So, <laughs> so is there only Antonio Banderas? Any other one? Who? Yeah, of course. Very good actor. No, 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 that's just a... Sp <laughs> no, 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 no. What is it, Batten? <laughs> It's, it's just your accent. <laughs> or if you're... Oh, B, B A R Bar 10. Bar 10. Oh, yes, we made it. <laughs> oh, it's a J, okay, of course. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm French. So I simply copy paste the method and uh, I mean the, the function call. Let's see if that works. Yes. So they played, I know none of these movies, but maybe you do. <laughs> El Amante Bilingue, 93. Libertino de Passione. I don't want to know what this one is. Uh, <laughs> All right. So we think that works. I'm gonna stop the demo here because uh, I'm really bad at these uh, actors' names. <laughs> um, all right, so we've seen how to call a third-party API. There is also uh, an OAuth integration, which I'm not going to demo here. It's a bit more complicated. You have to set up the OAuth endpoint to access OAuth protected resources, and you have to authorize the API once. Um, but there is uh, many, many demos using the OAuth endpoints. I mean, the OAuth, uh, sorry, the OAuth integration of AppScript. You can see that in the doc. Uh, there is a few uh, articles, for example, where we uh, query the Twitter API, uh, for example. So now we're gonna see how to call Google services. Uh, so we're actually gonna see a bit more serious demos 
because that was kind of fun, but uh, maybe not very, very useful in real life. So uh, this little demo, I'm going to show you how you can use the finance API in a moment. So here the idea was, oh, wait a minute. I must have that somewhere here. Let me refresh. Uh, so the idea is, for example, in my case, uh, I live in Switzerland, so I'm paid in Swiss francs. And I, I used to live in France. I paid in euros and, you know, I get some, some Google stock uh, units, so Gook. And uh, what happens is I want to know how much money I have usually, and I have the three, uh, you know, these three kind of, um, um, of currencies and, and amounts. So I have money in Swiss francs, money in, in euro and, and Google stock. Uh, and I want to know, yes, calculate how much money I have. So I can very, very simply, uh, using App Script, uh, and I actually use that every day, query and fetch the conversion rates and the price of the Google stock units and use that in a spreadsheet. So uh, how does that work is, let me, sh let me show you the demo first. I'm going to remove this, um, uh, this demo, uh, these values. I'm going to open the script editor and run that get stock method. <laughs> oh, that was it. So here, it went and fetched the, all these values. So it's actually a one-liner, very, very simple to use. You simply use the finance app, uh, which is the way to, to, to start using the finance API. And for the Google stock units, get stock info quote. Uh, for the stock change, I mean for the exchange rates, currency, uh, column, uh, US dollar, USD euro for, to get the US dollar to your uh, exchange rate. And um, I simply write that in a cell of the spreadsheet and use that, actually. And so what you haven't seen is um, when I opened the spreadsheet, the values were already here. And they were up to date. So how did I do that? So in AppScript, uh, you have what we call triggers. Uh, triggers are simple ways to uh, execute a method based on some parameters. Uh, for now, there is a few different types of triggers. Let's see the triggers in that spreadsheet. So you have time-driven triggers, which is what I'm using, is uh, every, actually, 10 minutes, the script runs in the background, even if the page is not open, and updates these values. So when I open the page, uh, the values should be at least 10 minutes fresh. Uh, and if I keep the page open, it keeps updating. So that's, that's pretty handy in that kind of case. So you can set up, uh, up time-based <laughs> triggers. There's a few other type of triggers uh, you can use is basically spreadsheet-based triggers, for example. That would be when somebody edits um, the spreadsheet, you can actually uh, trigger a method, uh, an AppScript function, or when people submit a form, uh, you know, you can, you can create forms using spreadsheet, and when somebody submits it, you could, um, you could execute some method. So here you go. Let me zoom out again. All right, so that was a very simple way to do your accounting if you're using multiple currencies uh, and, and stock. Uh, one other little demo I wanted to show you was how to use the charts API here, and same thing, I'm using the finance API to get, um, to get values of stock in the past. Oh, let me find the demo for you. Um, and what you see here, it's not running uh, in the App Script Editor or in a spreadsheet. What I've done is I've published my, my, um, I've published my script as a service. This is what you can do. Uh, and you can build a, a custom user interface, or here I'm just outputting some, uh, some graph using the Charts API uh, that people can see, uh, that everybody can see just by accessing this URL. So how do I do that? I'm not going to go too much into the details, but we can have a quick look. Uh, in my spreadsheet, I just have a start date and an end date and the two Google and the two uh, stock unit code. So here I, I simply want to trace the Google stock and the Apple stock. This is what we're seeing here. Uh, what, the, what the app script does, it simply gets these values and the dates and it's going to use the finance app and get the historical stock info based on the two dates and, uh, you know, build up a table of the data and I would put it as a charts, uh, uh, we're using the Google Charts API here. Uh, what I haven't shown you is the online editor has a few cool features. You can have autocomplete. Um, so for example, if you simply type finance app, 
you auto complete and you have all the methods that are available in finance app, etc. Uh, same thing for charts. Uh, you can see all you can do with the charts API here using the autocomplete. You know, it's simple. Every time you press the dot, it does that, or you can do control space. Um, and you also have debug methods. People often ask me how do you debug if it's not, you know, into if you don't build your code inside Eclipse. So there's a built-in debug. Uh, uh, debug feature, you can set breakpoints, etc. Inspect your code, inspect the values of, um, of, of your variables. So that's really, really, uh, that's pretty handy. And what I've done here, I wanted to show you uh, this last thing, is uh, I've published the script as a um, service. So to do that, you go to share, publish as a service, uh, you check a few boxes, and here you go, you get a URL which you can share, for example, with your collaborators in your company, uh, and they can access, you know, the interface or, or the data you're outputting. So that, so that was uh, using the script, sorry, the charts API and some financial data. Uh, and now I'm going to show you the Gmail snooze. It's, uh, who, have, who have read the blog post, Gmail snooze? It was actually pretty, one of our most popular blog posts. Nobody? Okay. Well, not that popular, I guess. <laughs> so. Uh, what Gmail Snooze does is, I wanted to build a feature. Let's, let's open Gmail here. When feature is missing in Gmail is, for example, if I have an email that I, for example, I'm in vacation or I don't want to take actions right now, I want the email to pop back up in my, in my inbox maybe in one day or two days or three days. Um, with App Script, you can, we can build that feature, which doesn't exist in, in, um, in Gmail nowadays, right? So, oh, Jonathan Gillen is in the room. Luis Lopez comes. New Twitter followers. Thank you. So, what I've done here is I've created labels here under snooze. Snooze for one day, snooze for two days, snooze for three days, snooze for four days. Uh, and when you want to use that feature, simply what you can do is simple, simply drop one email in this, uh, in this box. Let's say I want to snooze that email called LinkedIn Connections for two days. So I've simply moved it to the, um, uh, to, sorry, to the label here. I'm going to zoom again. Um, what the script is going to do, it's basically going to run every day and move the email back up to the next uh, label here, two days to one day. And when it's in one day, it's going to move them back up to the inbox and mark them as unread. So very simple. And you've seen already that we can, we can set up time-based triggers. So you could set, set up a time-based trigger every day to run, for example, at midnight and move your emails one day. That way you have a, um, you basically built a snooze feature inside Gmail very, very easily with App Script. Uh, it's not that many lines of code. And this is how you can build missing features. So let me just show you the script here. So you've seen I've moved that email to the two days um, to the two, to the two days label, sorry, and I'm going to run that method called move snoozes. So I run it once. Let's just wait for the script to finish. There you go. So this, so the email should have moved here now. Yes, it's not in snooze two days anymore. It's in snooze one day. And if I run the the same code once again. Mm -hmm. The email should pop back up in my inbox. Here you go. See LinkedIn connection, see what Ines has been up to. It, it got moved back up in my inbox, so this uses the Gmail API. I invite you to uh, actually use App Script and check out the Gmail API, which is very, very easy to use and very convenient. So just to show you the triggers we've built, I mean, we've set up. Uh, as I told you, we set up a time-based triggers that runs every day at midnight, once a day. So that moves that moves all the emails back up. Up, go back to the demo. Uh, sorry, to the slides. Uh, now we're going to see how to create a weekly newsletter generator. Um, so the idea behind this is. Uh, we're going to have a form. People are going to, you, you gonna simply going to create a, um, a spreadsheet form where people are going are gonna to subscribe. Actually, people who have computer and who are on the internet, how many people have that? You, do you have the internet? Not working. Not working? Ah. 
hopefully mine, mine is a bit working. So people who have the internet, could you please go to the forum here, bit.ly slash weekly newsletter uh, dash forum, sorry. Let me just zoom in. Uh, it would be good if a few people participate. So what you guys are gonna do, you're simply gonna subscribe to my newsletter and uh, using AppScript and using a mail merge feature, I'm gonna spam you uh, today. So, let's see a bit the code before uh, we go through. I'm just gonna give one more second for people to try to log in. That'd be cool. bit.ly slash weekly dash newsletter dash forum. I'm gonna copy paste this. Uh, where is my demo? Here. So this is what you're gonna see. I'm gonna copy paste the, uh, the URL here. So basically, you're gonna, what ha what's gonna happen is you're gonna, we're gonna ask you for your first name, uh, your email, the language in which you prefer the, um, uh, the newsletter to be sent to you, and what this script is gonna do is simply gonna send a newsletter to all these people, uh, customized, we're simply gonna change the first name to make it really simple. Uh, we're gonna use the Google Translate API to translate the newsletter in your favorite language. Um, a few people speak Catalan in the room, Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> and you still speak Spanish, right? Okay, okay good. So, um, I've never tried these uh, translations, so you're gonna tell me if that, uh, if that went okay. Now let's see if a few people have signed up. Yes, thank you. So we have a bit of everything. Some people wanted in English, Spanish, Catalan, very good. I'm the only French guy here. Um, so, what I haven't shown you is this as well. Uh, I've simply written the weekly newsletter in a Google Docs and what the script is going to do is going to extract the HTML of this Google Docs and insert it in the, in the email body to send that to people uh, and replacing the first name here. First name. I'm going to show, show you the code how to do this right now. So uh, the first app script method that, uh, that's in my example is simply going to use the doclist API, your Google Docs API, uh, to check all the weekly newsletter you have oh. and find the latest one, you know. So I've just given them a title, weekly newsletter number one, two, three, etc. So this method here simply finds all of them and gets the latest one. So that's the one we're going to send. Uh, then this method here is going to send uh, all the newsletters, it's simply going to parse all the entries of the form that have been submitted, take the first name, the email, the language, um, and pass that to a sub method, send subscriber newsletter right here. <coughs> then what the send subscriber newsletter does, it's, it's actually calls a method to get the HTML content of the, um, uh, of the newsletter itself from the Google Docs. It's going to use the translate API to tra translate it. Uh, you can see here it's very easy, it's actually just one line. And we also translate the title, so it's actually equals to the API. And we use the Gmail uh, feature to simply send the emails uh, containing the, the translated uh, HTML content of the, of the newsletter. And this is how I actually get the HTML uh, of the Google Docs. So this is a bit of a trick. Uh, it's not part of App Script really, but uh, when one, one Google Doc is actually set to public, you can query that URL here that I've built. Uh, basically, uh, it's the export feature of, of Google Docs, uh, and you add a URL parameter called export format equal HTML, and it returns you the HTML of a Google Docs. Um, so it's not part of App Script. App Script have a feature to actually let you get the PDF uh, of a Google Docs, but not yet HTML. This is why I'm using this workaround. Uh, hopefully, the HTML format will be added directly into App Script. So it could be uh, simply one API call. And uh, let's, see, uh, let's see how we do that now using the mail merge. Okay, so how many people have signed up? 37, well, it's pretty good. Uh, so I simply, so this is another feature I haven't, you haven't seen in the other demos, is you can add uh, inside the spreadsheet, you can add menus here. And actually uh, menus, when, when you click one of the, uh, item it's simply going to execute one method. So this method is uh, going to execute all the methods we've seen in the slides. So let's run this. Wait until it's this 37 email to, to send, so it's taking a, it's going to take a few seconds. <laughs> Up. Okay. 
still running, and here it finished. So now if I go inside my Gmail, so I received the weekly newsletter translated to French. So who has received the Spanish ones? Yes, okay. Was it good Spanish? Yeah. <laughs> what about Catalan? Is it better translation? No, okay. <laughs> Too bad. Well, in French it was okay, so uh, that's how I tested the translation, but it uh, doesn't always work in every language. You know, it's going to improve one day. Uh, now we're going to see how to use the UI services. Uh, I, I've shown you just before how we can use the Charts API, but we also have this UI service that lets you build, uh, build user interface, you know, with like input box, etc. So, what I've built, and, and we actually use that inside Google, um, is a GIFT pickup system. So, we were lucky a few months ago to get, sometimes Google gives us GIFTs, so they give us like this backpack for, with written Google on it. And uh, so we had to go to this desk and uh, swipe our Google badge. This is a Google badge. Uh, swipe it on some, uh, some good, on some badge reader. It looks like that's, that, that's an RFID badge reader. Um, that's how they get the ID of our badge. And they were looking into that huge spreadsheet to find our uh, ID, badge ID. And you know Mark manually, uh, yes, he has picked up his badge. Uh, it contained the name of everybody. So uh, I've built a, a little app script for them really, really quickly. Um, to be honest, that took me maybe four hours. I had to check the doc a lot. I didn't have any, uh, uh, any examples uh, to use. So what I've built for them is a simple gift pickup system. So let me just show you. It was really simple. It's just um, a little user interface. So it's a bit slow, probably internet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So it's, um, it's just a little interface where people are simply going to swipe their badge. So I'm going to swipe my badge. Uh, it's good. What the script is going to do is going to look into the badge ID column here, containing all the badge ID. That's what's outputted by this device that behaves like a, a basically like a keyboard. Uh, and it's simply going to mark the picked column. Let me zoom in for the people who are far. Uh, the picked column as yes and the picked up date. Uh, it's going to set the actual date, so you know when the people has picked it up. So very simple. Let's, let's, let me just show you how that works. So, up that I would put it. Uh, what's good about this device is that it um, it doesn't enter at the end, so you can actually catch the enter and parse through the list. So here, the thing it's it does everything server side, so it sent all the events server side, and uh, you can see here. It's been marked as picked up yes, and uh, the picked up date has been marked. And okay, it took a while. Usually, it's a bit faster when you have good internet. Uh, but it simply displays a confirmation message. Uh, Nicholas Garnier has picked up his gift. It was really useful. So uh, within a few hours, you can build a system like this. You know that that just it's a bit better because there is no human error. I mean, less human error possible. You can still go to the spreadsheet and modify the cells. Uh, and that saves lots of time, and it's ready for the next people to swipe his badge. Uh, so that's a way to use App Script to actually, for example, build a real interface or improve the life of people who were using a system based on spreadsheet that wasn't um, uh, that that wasn't really great. So what they were doing before, instead they were they were using the command F, uh, find. They were swiping the badge, uh, click the find button to find the entry and, and mark everything manually. So that was taking a bit longer. They could make some error, et cetera. They didn't have the exact pickup date. So this is what App Script improved in that case. Um, I have no more demos. So that's going to be it for today. Uh, there is lots of resources, though, you could check. Uh, we have an online documentation. I promised the team that I would open the doc and show you uh, how, it, how it looks like. So I'm going to do it right now. So this is the Google App Script doc. Uh, you just simply have to click on Docs here. And um, if it's not too slow, here. Uh, and the user guide, and this is what you should read first. Uh, it contains basic examples of each of the features, how you can use them. And under default services, it shows you all the services, basically all the Google APIs and how to, how to access external APIs. Uh, you should check all that. 
And one inter very interesting uh, part is the articles. This is a real life example. So for example, here you can find the, the Twitter approval manager implementation using the Twitter API uh, inside AppScript, for example. Uh, this is the thing you can do. So that's it for the doc. Uh, we have tutorials, I'll show you those are Tutorials are actually called articles uh, at Google. Uh, we have a forum, online community, you can ask all your questions. Uh, and I've, I invite you to follow our Google Apps blog uh, here. So uh, we post very, very often articles, examples of, um, of things you can build with AppScript, but also about many, many other technologies. Uh, we're gonna announce all the events. Actually, um, in Q1, um, so, in January, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to organize an AppScript hackathon. It's going to be in Madrid, not here, sorry. Uh, maybe maybe one, one day it will be here. But uh, So for people who, who will be in uh, Madrid uh, in January, there'll be an AppScript hackathon. You can simply follow the Google Apps developer blog. Uh, there'll be an, an announcement here. I mean, there will be some prices to win, and, and it's going to be a fun evening with free pizza. So you should come. Um, <laughs> all right, this is it. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And we actually have uh, eight minutes left, or no, actually maybe only five or a few minutes. So I'll be happy to take questions from the audience. If there's anybody with question, yes. Hi. It's Hello. Easy to control um, Twitter and script and control what users in the Google App um, group of users get access to it. So create an application for a menu option for yeah. and then select a group of users in Google Apps or select individual users. Um, uh, you want only, did I understand correctly? I couldn't hear very well before I moved. So yeah. you want the menu option to only appear for certain groups of people, is it? Yeah. Or? yeah. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> so it's going to appear to everybody who has access to the spreadsheet. Uh, who have actually write access. So uh, it's per spreadsheet, not per... Yeah, well, this menu, yes, this menu that appears in the spreadsheet, because how it works right now, how it still works, it's, it's probably going to change in the future, is uh, each app script is actually um, uh, goes together with a, with a spreadsheet, is associated to a spreadsheet. So the app script has this method, is like get active spreadsheet and add menu. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it shows up in the in the spreadsheet that uh, that is associated to to the script right now. Yes. Thank you. There are another question. Yes. Hi. Hello. Uh, this is compatible with mobile version of Google Docs. With uh, mobile okay. version. Uh, with Outlooks. Is that what you no, said? No, no. <laughs> For Android uh, Docs oh. version. Oh, the online uh, Android Docs application. Yeah. Uh, no, not yet. So the Android app is going to evolve, but right now you don't, uh, you can't, act, you can't like execute the, the app script inside this doc. Uh, right now, actually, the um, uh, the Google Docs application is mostly uh, an embedded web view, uh, but like the the mobile view, uh, I mean the mobile version of Google Docs doesn't show the app script uh, rather. So yeah, unfortunately, it's only for a desktop application or. or uh, in a computer like Chromebooks, uh, that's my thing. Yeah. Thank you. Another question? Hmm? No, no. Last chance. <laughs> okay, so um, I think that's it. So thank you very much for coming. Um, it was very nice. And I'll be available right now for if you have any questions uh, in private. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be staying around. So thank you very much.